We good to go? Okay, perfect. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. My name's Sam Cayley. I've been leading Deutsche Bank's uh, migration into Google Cloud since early 2020. Uh, and my name is Tim Mason. I run our innovation group and I've been leading our AI program. Um, I will confess I'm not a deep technical expert, so if you've got techie questions, I've got some other DB people like Tony in the audience to uh, ask her questions. Sam, over to you. I think you need to hold your microphone a bit closer. I see somebody nodding at us to do so. So um, we're going to talk about uh, cloud in a highly regulated environment. And I'm going to talk briefly about this. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more, I'm doing a talk at 1 PM tomorrow. And I'll go into a little bit more detail, talk about some of the lessons learned over in the GCC room. Um, but for now, uh, let's give you a bit of context. So where we're at at the moment in, uh, in our migration, we have about uh, just under 200 applications live in Google Cloud, including some pretty massive ones. So SAP, our general ledger. We have online banking for our German retail clients, so about 5 million clients live. We've got some massive surveillance, anti-financial crime systems, and so on live. So pretty, pretty substantial. We have uh, thousands of people working on cloud right across Deutsche Bank, right across all the different divisions, the retail, the investment bank, and the uh, wealth management area. Um, and we've trained thousands of people, thousands of our developers. And uh, there's also been a talk on that already. You've unfortunately missed that. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, but first, before I talk a little bit about our journey, we'll, we're going to start with a quiz. So it's an easy quiz. First of all, what's this? Anybody? Yes, it is indeed the Deutsche Bank logo. Thank you. Um, so that's, that's an easy one, but here's a bit of a harder one. What does it mean? Does anyone know what it means? Ah, yes, that's sir. Uh, perfect, E star. I didn't think anybody was going to answer that. I don't know whether he works there. I don't recognize you. So it does indeed. So this was designed by a guy called Anton Stankowski in 1972 and it represents profitable growth in a risk-controlled environment. So it does actually mean something. And this is fundamental to the philosophy we've had to adopt when migrating to cloud as part of Deutsche Bank. Um, and it's sort of pervaded everything that we do as a 154-year-old German bank. Uh, it's clearly a, a, a new challenge that we've had to master. And there's, there's three things I'm gonna just mention that uh, we really uh, have had to take, spend a lot of time on. The first is regulation. So in order to get our applications and data into cloud, we had to work with at least 30 regulators globally. And especially for some of our global applications, which has data relevant to all these different jurisdictions, we can only move as fast as the slowest regulator. And that's honestly been quite a journey of, uh, of education um, and a lot of uh, working with them to understand. And sometimes it's meant that we've had to create hybrid solutions. So China, Saudi Arabia, in banking, certainly we can't use public cloud. So it's meant that we've had to generate some new approaches and new architectures. The other thing that we've had to deal with is data privacy. And that's a, um, that's a major topic and a major uh, sensitivity, of course, in, in banking. So we've un implemented things like uh, EK EKM and KAJ, so external key management, key access justification. We also work with Google on their assured workloads uh, service, which if, for those that don't know, this basically means the backhaul um, flows of, of data within Google stay within the region and it also means that the support service is provided from within certain limited regions. Um, and we're just about to roll that out in, in Switzerland at the moment given the, the tough banking secrecy laws. The, the other thing that we've had to do is, is caused us to, when migrating to cloud, it's, it's meant that some of our older applications, we've had to uplift quite a lot the components, the patching approaches, some of the, uh, some of the ways that the, the applications operate in order to meet the security standards that we set for ourselves on cloud. Um, so it's, it's really meant that some of the lift and shift ideas that we had where we were gonna move large volumes is actually pretty challenging in most cases and, and it, the, the business case doesn't become so viable. So it's much more of a transformation than a migration. So I think if I, if I think about a couple of lessons we've learned, or I've certainly learned in the years we've been doing this, I think first of all, I'd say that, you know, as regulators think more and governments think more about their data and keeping their data in their jurisdiction for, you know, good or bad reasons so they can get their hands on it. Actually, Google gives us a really powerful solution to solve for those sort of problems. Those sort of problems would have been really hard to solve on premise without a lot of cost and a lot of disruption. We still have to change the application architectures often, but actually Google, you know, we clearly 
As you know, you can change the location of a storage bucket, of a service, just with a, uh, a command change. And the second thing that's been really interesting from my perspective is that the because we've had to do such a lot of change to our applications to uplift them to the new security encryption standards um, and so on, it's basically meant that our, the cloud environment has, has become a, a lower risk and better controlled environment than we would, I think, be able to achieve on premise. So whilst we originally thought about it as a risky challenge that we needed to solve for, what we've ended up creating through the investments and working with Google is something that's better controlled and lower risk ultimately. And I think this was uh, not intuitive, but when we started. So let me hand over to Tim, who's going to talk about some of the uh, some of the things we need to do with AI in that environment. Thank, thank you, Tim. So the context there, you've got this bank, 150 years old, that we talk about growth in a controlled environment. When we talk about control, we really are up there. We don't take any risk. Our idea of risk is it cannot exist. So what happens when you have AI, a brand new technology, highly risky, into this environment of regulation where we take no risk compared to other banks. Let's talk a bit about how we saw the AI opportunity. If you think about what we were looking at with AI, you've heard the last few days, lots of people talking about the different use cases. We've seen opportunities in marketing and selling for generative AI in front of our customers and creating material. We're, we're doing use cases in that space. Onboarding customers, how to do with documents, with KYC, for example, with Doc AI, we've been doing pilots and running those into production now as well whether you're doing transaction monitoring, settlement, paying uh, ris uh, risk and fraud. We're looking at um, use cases around entity resolution using language models to actually better understand is our customer our customer. You look at finance, treasury, liquidity, or even operating the bank. You look at software code development. You look at how we use language models in our operation space, understanding emails and so on. We see the opportunity everywhere. Now, like everybody else, we're leading with some big use cases and get those in place. But what do you do in a situation where you're going to see that there's not one, two or 10 use cases, there's going to be hundreds in a highly controlled regulated environment. And that's the challenge we've been facing into. So let's talk a bit about how we might scale in that environment where what we've been trying to do is secure everything in a way that we can let developers build AI tools safely at scale. When we talk about building safely at scale, there's four things that we really need to understand when we talk about AI systems. And the first one is we talk about AI usage. Now, question number one the regulator says to you is, what AI are you doing? Tell us all that AI you're doing everywhere. Whether it's in somebody else's system you're using, whether you've built it, you need to know all of your AI wherever it is. That's actually not a, an easy thing to go and do. We can use systems like Vertex to tell us and register where we can actually use that. But there's a lot of AI resident in other people's systems as well. Uh, one of our answers to that is we have an AI oversight forum of all our control functions together that also looks at the usage. Because the second question you've got is, should I be using AI for that system? The new EI, EU AI Act is now live about how you can use AI. You have to consider that use as well. The third one we actually look at is just how that system is getting used in its own right. Whether the way the system is set up, the way that people have built it is actually correct. So the first one we have to consider is AI usage. Then you go deeper and we look at AI safety. As a bank, if we're doing a chat with a customer, we're doing a generative chat, we, ha we really, really worry about can the customer make the chat do something it shouldn't. There's been some well-published examples of bored customers asking a chat system, create me a poem about how bad your, customer, your, your company is and publishing that. But we're also really concerned about whether the answer is right. For us as a bank, if a customer is doing a chat to a system and the answer is wrong or misleading, that can be a fatal situation for us from a regulator in a risk perspective. So we're looking at guardrail solutions where whilst we understand that Vertex has some of those built in, they're not good enough for us. We'll be building separate guardrail solutions for our developers to use and call to actually control what questions get asked, what's the answer. Let's go even deeper. We start to then look at the security of an AI system and actually how it's constructed. We start to look at data loss prevention, where the data is, whether you're allowed to put the data there and put a whole set of reactive controls in place about how that system is getting used overall. And the last thing is system security. Now, I've seen a lot of people over the last few days talk about what they've been doing with the tools. And certainly, we as Deutsche Bank keep saying, are, are we being slow in the way we're doing it? 
and we ask some really fundamental questions. Remember, the, the growth in a controlled environment says we don't take risk. So I'll give you some examples. When we look at the use of document AI, one of the things we looked at was court order documents in Germany, where a court order document would say, you've got to stop this client's account and paying money. In order to get that through Doc AI, the issue isn't a technology one. We've been working with Google to trace the entire flow within the tool of where the data is, how long it's stored, what does that mean, will it leak anywhere? And we've been finding holes. Now the good news, every time we find a hole, we work with Google and they turn around and say, we will add that to the product roadmap. So key access justification is one of the things that now gets enabled in Doc AI. Now some clients may not need it, but from our perspective, that would mean that when we're using Doc AI, if it works for us, we would say it's fit for banking because we really, really worry about the detail. If you're looking at a product like Vertex Conversation Search and talking to a customer, as you start to pull that apart, you find that the product will start to log what the customer is saying within it. Where is that being held? Is that available? Can other people get access? Does it allow you to create open endpoints to other places, which it does? And again, what Google's doing with us is now hardening all of those tools. So we've been going through every single one of the Google tools piece by piece with Google, breaking it all the way down into small components, looking at all of the risk factors. But with Google and the partnership we have, they've been adding all the features to the roadmap. So the good thing I would say is if we're releasing a tool in production and we're using it, it's fit for banking in a way that probably is more excessive than most other people would need. But then how do we actually get our developers to use this as we're instantiating these tools? Here's something we're trying to build and put together. So we could release Vertex around the organization to everywhere. Indeed, we've started to do that. But one thing we want to do is make sure our developers use the tools in the right way. And we're creating an interactive development environment, which is called an AI workbench. And the AI workbench is a landing zone within which we've got project folders. And inside those project folders, we've allowed people to have all of the right tools available to them along with all of our custom-built guardrails. So within those environments, it allows our developers to build safe AI systems inside those, those areas, those project folders. And the kicker for this one is that the plan is to have this running within our production network, which means that the developer can have production data in a safe area that can't leak. That's one of the biggest issues you see about building AI systems, is how do you build them with non-production data and know the answers right? So this concept that we're putting together of an AI workbench wraps up all of the uses of Vertex together into a set of landing zones, which is controlled with the control plane to make sure they're safe. So bottom line is, what have we been doing? To make sure it's, it's safe, we have observability controls within our tools, plus manual controls as well. We're putting guardrails on everything that we do everywhere, reactive controls on all the systems, but every single tool that we use from Google goes through an, an absolute thorough analysis, and we then release approved services inside the firm. And if it's approved, I will say this again, if it's fit for Deutsche Bank and we use it, it's fit for banking. And that's really the depth of the partnership we've been having with Google.